welcome to Edinburgh Napier University MBA webinar. My name is Helen Spiropoulos. I'm the admissions manager at Stafford Global. And joining me this evening all the way from the UK is uh, Dr. McFadden Young. How are you this evening? Good, Helen. Thanks for having me here today. Good, good. And it's wonderful to actually see quite a lot of you that have joined us uh, from the UAE as well as uh, in Africa. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us. How we are going to conduct the webinar this evening, I'm just briefly going to introduce you to Stafford Global, what we do. And then I'm going to hand you over to um, Dr. Karan, who's actually going to talk about the MBA. Uh, towards the end of the presentation, you will have the opportunity to type out any questions that you'd like to ask me or Dr. Kiran, and we'll be able to answer that. I will also be uh, grouping these questions together because a lot of them are uh, very, very similar, if not identical. Okay, so let's get started. Who is Stafford Global? Well, we were established in 1993. We have been in the education industry for over 30 years. Um, and our role at a Stafford Global is to assist students throughout the application process. Now, the mere fact that you have been here with us this evening means that you have been in touch with one of our experienced academic consultants. Now, we do offer a variety of programs, uh, ranging from certificates to diplomas, um, bachelors right through until MBAs and doctorates. So we really do have all the programs for your personal and professional needs. I'm now going to hand you over to Dr. Huran and uh, he'll take you through the MBA program and I will join you towards the end um, and uh, obviously assist with all the questions. Over to you. Thanks, Helen, and hi, everyone. I'm glad to meet you here this evening. Uh, so my name is Dr. Kiara McFadden-Young, and I'm the program leader for the Global Online MBA and all the specialisms uh, that we'll look at today uh, within the Global Online MBA. And so I just wanted to start off just to tell you a little bit about Edinburgh. Um, I've lived there for four years. and I live very close to it now. We've been voted the best UK city for the past three years. It's really a great city to, to live in, to work in, and obviously to shop in. And to uh, if you ever get the chance to be a tourist in Edinburgh as well, um, I highly recommend it. So this is Edinburgh Castle, which is just above our main shopping street, Prince's Street. So you can see that while you're going, um, going shopping. We're home to more uh, FTSE 100 and tech startup companies than any other UK city outside London. So we are a major hub. We're the capital of Scotland. We're a major hub when it comes to tech companies um, and some financial tech companies as well. We're also home to, you might have heard of the Edinburgh Festival and Edinburgh Fringe Festival, home to the largest arts festival in the world. So why is that important? Well, it means that there is practitioner experience um, on offer with our lecturers who will have worked, for example, our tourism lecturers will have worked and done research on the arts festival um, as well as some people having some collaborations with businesses in, in the financial tech and the tech, uh, tech startup companies there in Edinburgh. We have over 19,000 students from more than 130 countries. So we are a global university and we have a lot of different uh, nationalities and backgrounds and obviously a range of experiences um, that really helps uh, enrich the learning experience. Uh, we have 13,500 studying on campus Edinburgh and then 6,000 studying at partner universities worldwide and online. So we have, as I said, a very global uh, learning environment as well as a very uh, a very high potential online learning environment as well. So with the MBA Global Online, you're both benefiting from that global experience as well as the well-oiled machine that is our online learning environment. In terms of views on Edinburgh Napier, to be more specific about our rankings and awards that we've won, we're number one million plus modern university for business management. We're a top five UK modern university for accounting and finance. We're top 10 UK modern university for marketing. We're the top ranked Scottish modern university uh, from the Times and the Sunday Times Good University Guide 2020. We're top 10 UK modern university for business more broadly uh, from the Guardian in 2021. In 2019, the National Student Survey, so that's the survey of all students um, that uh, within the UK, uh, 
that, uh, that take part in the survey, the HRM subject group to which I belong, they actually received 100% student satisfaction and we actually were then number one in the UK out of all institutions offering HRM. So no matter if you're looking at accounting and finance, if you're looking at the marketing route, the HRM route, or just the broad business route with a global online MBA, you know that you're in safe hands, you know that you're in experienced lecturers, as well as that support system and that online learning environment is, is, is very well developed there. We have five QS stars for teaching uh, internationalization, obviously, but also employability. So that value add to once you have uh, completed your degree, or in this case, Global Online MBA, that actually has some value adding to, to, your, uh, to your career. And we're top 10 in the UK for graduate employability, uh, building on that, and the HR Excellence and Research Award from the European Commission, and the Business School and the National Student Survey uh, with 84% student satisfaction, I believe, uh, since this uh, this slide was designed, we've actually got, got improved slightly on that as well. So let's talk about the MBA. And I'm going to first talk about the MBA general route, and then we'll go on to talk about the specialism. So the specialisms can be really tailor-made to your own career. So whether you're in healthcare, whether you're in, for example, events management, there is an MBA route there that will help your specific career. But let's just say we're not quite sure what MBA we want to take right now. So you can take the general route, and then later on, we'll be able to change specialisms depending on the, the modules that we've taken so far. So the MBA general uh, modules, you'll see here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight modules altogether. All of that, seven of those modules are 20 credits. And then the MBA project, so your dissertation and your research project that you do at the end, that is obviously worth 40 credits because that's quite a significant piece of work. Uh, and so all of that then, everything um, here is core to the MBA, to all MBA routes, except for those modules in blue. So the managing innovation and the contemporary issues in strategic management, they will be swapped out with other modules depending on what specialism you're doing. But no matter what MBA specialism or route that you want to take, you will be taking these first four modules as well as the research skills for managers and the MBA project at the very end. So let's talk briefly through the modules. So management and organizational change is a core module, and that's really about the, the, the idea of how do you manage change within the organization. And so one thing is always constant within the organization, ironically, and that's change. Everyone is either downsizing, they're, they're building up. Uh, we've obviously had a huge change, changes um, happening when we all moved online um, during the last year. So change is always a constant. So, but people within the organization don't like that. The employees don't necessarily like that. Maybe you've been in an organization where change has happened, your role maybe has changed, or you're working on a different team or with different people. Intuitively and kind of instinctively, we, we don't like that as much. So that module then is about how do we manage that and how do we lead that change as a, as a manager or as a leader within an organization? How do we reassure people? How do we make sure that all the people-related processes are, are okay and all the task-related processes, the change itself, is actually carried out okay as well? Next then we have leading strategic decision making. So this is a kind of a hybrid module. So we're looking at both leadership and strategy. So uh, the, again, the role of the leader within the organization, but also looking at strategy within the organization. Now, how do we make strategic changes or strategic plans or initiatives? Uh, and what, what factors do we have to take into account within our organization, within our environment, within our competitors, for example? Another hybrid mod module then is marketing and building high performing organizations. So that's obviously marketing is, is one part of that. And then we have a bit of entrepreneurship as the other half. So building high performing organizations um, as an entrepreneur, how do we make sure that our organization is going to perform well? And how do we then market that? So it's again, another hybrid module. Uh, lastly then, so the last of the, the core modules for the MBA general uh, is the global business, economics and finance. So both looking at the individual organization's financial, um, uh, for example, spreadsheets, balance sheets uh, and their own accounts, as well as linking that to the global uh, business environment and economic environment. So looking, for example, at how recessions or depressions um, or, or rises in the market can affect your own individual organization. In blue then, so again, this is only on the general MBA that you'd be doing that, that's managing innovation. So innovation, not necessarily just in terms of products. We all think of Apple and Google when we think of innovation, but innovation can happen at a very kind of mundane level within the services, uh, service provision within the processes within our organization. So no matter what organization we have, we don't have to be a Silicon Valley organization. We always want to manage our own innovation and make sure that we can improve upon that to improve our processes, products or services. 
Then uh, the second uh, compulsory module on the general MBA is contemporary issues and strategic management. Again, this is a, st a strategy module, but it's linking to contemporary issues. So all the lecturers on that module will be will be talking about a very up-to-date issue. So maybe that's something like, um, how has the COVID-19 pandemic affected our strategy or our business strategy? So something like that, a very contemporary, up-to-date issue relevant for today's uh, workplace. Lastly then, uh, the, la the second last module that you'll have uh, is research skills for manager. So the, another core module, and that's really about making you uh, able to, or having you be able to, be able to uh, carry out a research project. So this is the kind of the, the primer for your MBA project. So MBA project, as I said, a significant piece of work, but you will have some practice and you will have the knowledge that you need to carry out that project before you go in by carrying out research skills for manager, uh, managers. And this is a module that I teach on. And on that module, I would teach qualitative analysis. So talking to people, having semi-structured or structured research interviews with people, and how to analyze that qualitative data afterwards. There's also quantitative analysis. So that's what we usually think of when we think of research. So our, our, um, our tests, our experiments, um, our statistics, things like that but also things like research ethics as well uh, our MBA project then as I said 40 credits and this is really quite open to your own career your own interests so I will say that depending on what specialism or what route you have that will do, that will affect what MBA project you can do so if you are doing for example an MBA uh, global online in finance you have to take a finance project if you're doing uh, in tourism and events management you'd have to take those particular uh, routes. But within that within that particular topic then, or within that particular speciality, I should say, you can pick whatever topic you want in conversation with your supervisor. So if there's something that's bugging you, if there's something you're thinking, I've never you know seen research on this or I don't know why this is happening, then that, this is this is where you can actually uh, characterize your own uh, MBA journey and you can you can personalize it to yourselves. So I've had MBA projects that have looked at, for example, um, because I do deal with diversity and inclusion, I've had uh, MBA projects that are looking at um, the, the, the role of female leaders within organizations and how female leaders are perceived across different cultures. And so my student in that uh, looked, uh, talked to people within the hospitality industry to different people who had different, who had female leaders who had different backgrounds um, and came from different um, parts of the world to see were there any differences in, in their perceptions of female leaders and female leadership in general. Um, because as we know, there's, a, there's quite a lot of literature on female leadership. So these are the types of things. And she came up with that just in a conversation with me. So that's something that I'm really interested in and really, really bugs me that I don't know about that. So this is where the MBA project is, where you can characterize and personalize your own MBA journey. In terms of the exit points, well, hopefully you'll stay with us for the whole uh, the whole of the MBA, but there are certain ex exit points that you can you can have. So individual modules carry an, a separate uh, award. So you'd have um, if you left left after one module, for example, you would get an award uh, for that. If you did sixty credits, so that's three modules. So that's say management, organizational change, uh, leading strategic decision making, and marketing and building high performing organizations. If you did say those three, you would get a postgraduate certificate. If you take 120 credits, uh, you would get a postgraduate diploma. Uh, and so that's all of the modules except for your last two there. Um, and uh, so your research skills for managers and MBA project. But if you complete those last two modules, research skills for managers and MBA project, you will leave with an MBA, uh, obviously the full MBA though, with 180 credits. So let me just go back. So that was the MBA general route. I uh, hope you're still with me. And then the blue modules, the blue modules there in blue, we're going to swap them out depending on what speciality or what route we want to take. So let's look at the routes. So you'll see, for example, we you can do the MBA general, or you could do, for example, an MBA in banking, in criminal justice, in entrepreneurship, uh, finance, in HRM, leadership and innovation, marketing, project management. Again, you're able to customize this to your own particular, uh, your own particular career and your aspirations for your career. And so those, the, under each of those routes, you'll see two modules. So for example, on the MBA banking, uh, there's a module in global finance and a module in financial markets, institutions and banking. And we can actually swap that with managing innovation and contemporary issues and strategic management. Okay, so if we swap the two modules in blue, for uh, the global finance and financial markets institution of banking, you would leave them with an MBA in banking. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, you'll see as well, usually what people do in the, the, the usual uh, rhythm of the MBA is that people will carry out these 
or we'll do these uh, four modules first. So MOC, LSTM, uh, MD, HBO, and Global Business Economics and Finance, they'll do them. And then maybe they're on the general route or maybe they're on a particular route. Because they've only done those four modules, they can then choose, okay, I'm on maybe, let's say I'm on the banking route, but actually I think maybe the MBA in finance might be a better route. So you actually can, with uh, with conversation with myself, you can change um, specialism uh, within within your, uh, when, when you're actually doing the, the MBA. So as you can see, a lot of different uh, options available to you really customize it to your own career and your own career as aspirations. So let's talk a little bit just about what, what the learning experience looks like. What does it look like um, when you're doing a global online program with Edinburgh Napier University? Well, really the one key thing I want to get, get through to you is that we're designing these programs with flexibility in mind. Okay, so we know that people have um, very busy careers, they might have caring responsibilities, they might have a lot of things going on, but they still want to improve um, the, their own knowledge and they want to maybe uh, have certain career aspirations, which uh, means that an MBA will actually help them out with that. So we have that flexibility in mind and that's how we design these programs. So it's 100% online. So you will never have to go onto campus to to uh, to talk to a lecturer or to attend a class or a tutorial or anything like that. 100% online. It's also what we call asynchronous. So synchronous learning is where we'd have, for example, myself as the lecturer, I would have students in the lecture hall and I would be talking to them uh, or online and I'd be talking to them and they'd be responding. And it's synchronous. We're both in the same. We're both uh, watching and communicating at the same time. With the global online programs, that is asynchronous learning, which means that the lectures are pre-recorded and then you watch them in your own time. Okay, so that's where the flexibility comes in. You can study at a time, a place, and a pace that suits your own personal and professional demands. Okay, so there's nobody going to, there's certain deadlines in place, but nobody is going to be chasing you to say, have you watched that lecture yet? Or you didn't attend this tutorial or anything like that. It's asynchronous. It's fully in your own time, place and pace that suits you. We have high quality materials. We're engaging uh, materials, interactive materials, and obviously then self-directed. So we're not just going to be throwing a lot of information at you and telling you to, to go read it. Uh, it's interactive and it's engaging as well. And it's also, as we said, self-directed. So you can do it in your own time frame. It's truly, like I said, international student experience. You will have classmates from all around the world. We have classmates from uh, the UAE, from Africa, um, from Asia, from Canada, from America, and, and from Europe. Uh, truly an international student experience, which benefits them because we have this global network. We have three intakes per year, January, May, and September. And I'll talk a little bit about the application deadline for this May intake in a second. But that's really what the global online programs at ENU look like. In terms of assessment, and I know this is something that kind of worries people about how to juggle assessments, not even just the lectures, but how do we do assessments? So you'll be provided with formative feedback and summative assessments. Formative feedback in basic pedagogical terms uh, basically means that we'll give you constructive feedback. So you'll be able to engage with your lecturers or your global online tutors, and you'll be able to ask them for formative feedback. So uh, for example, if you submit an essay, you will both get formative feedback. So you'll get, say, uh, feedback on, on, on what you did well, what could be improved, and what you can do for the next assessment, and also summative assessment. So that's where you get the grade. So you get the, the, the mark um, out of 100. After each module, we have end of unit progress tests. So we have 10 academic units with online questions at the end of each unit uh, within each of the modules. This will test your knowledge and understanding of the key concepts within each unit and will count as 10% of the final module mark. So you see, it's not a huge amount of your mark, but it is a kind of significant uh, part, part of your mark if you're going for the, the very top grades. Um, and obviously that, that it acts as a kind of an interactive way of testing your knowledge of the concepts. Then each module has an end of module assessment and that's worth 90% of the final module mark. So obviously this is the, the, the most important assessment. Depending on the module, you will have different assessments. So for example, with uh, HRM, which I teach, I might ask you to do an essay or I might ask you to do a report, a consultancy report, for example. But if you're on uh, the, the MBA finance, you might be asked to do some financial analysis or something like that and then draw up a report at the end of it. It really depends on what each module is looking at. 
The assessments will be undertaken online, obviously, uh, and will be described in the approved module descriptors. So if you're very keen to, to look at uh, and you know which route you want to take, you can look at those modules right now on the Edinburgh Napier website and see what are the module assessments there. As part of the quality assurance process, uh, module leaders then sample a number of the summative assessments. So they'll take maybe, um, I think it's a square root sample, so um, maybe five or ten from each class, and portfolios as I check that the work submitted undertaken is that of the matriculated students. So obviously trying to avoid um, plagiarism there and making sure that all the work that's submitted is actually the work of the student. And you're advised that if, in, if there is any question regarding authorship, so just any question of, of that, uh, of your submitted assessment, that we have the right to require you to take an on, uh, to undertake an online viva. So there is a process in place there, uh, both to check for plagiarism and then to, to deal with it if it actually has occurred. But obviously plagiarism is a very serious issue, so um, I hope none of you will be engaging in that. Moving on then to our timetable and the way that our year is set out. Uh, we have divided our academic year into three trimesters of 13 weeks each. So trimester one, for example, we could say it would be January to April, uh, and you'll do two modules per trimester. Okay, so I mean, it, it's not um, an insignificant amount of work, but it is manageable, again, because we're thinking of flexibility and the people who have full-time careers and caring responsibilities in mind, it is a manageable workload as long as you give some time towards that. So trimester one, let's say January to April, you'll have two modules. The first two modules, uh, for example, management and organizational change in LSDM, uh, leading strategic decision making. Uh, in trimester two, then you do another two modules. Trimester three, another two modules of four, uh, 20 credits each. Then trimester four, you do your research skills for managers. Uh, and these dates, I should say, these months dates, these are going to differ compared to depending on what uh, where, when you join. Uh, but trimester four, then January to April, research skills for managers is your your only module that one that you, that trimester. We want you to engage with that and really get to get to grips with uh, with uh, research processes. And then trimester five, so you have an entire trimester then to do your dissertation project. And so your supervisor will be in contact with you throughout this trimester and they'll be guiding you and giving you feedback, both formative and, and somewhat of feedback on your dissertation drafts and the chapters that you can send them. So you're very much not doing this on your own. You will have a supervisor there to help you along with that. Per trimester then, and in within each of the modules then, week one of that trimester, you'll have access to the module materials on our virtual learning environment, which is Moodle. Some of you might have experienced Moodle before. You will have online induction and we'll commence the studies. Then weeks 12, 2 to 12 is, is the module study. And as I said, that's all self-directed. You engage with the module materials yourself and, and you self-direct your own learning, uh, learning on that journey. And then week 13, so the last uh, week of the trimester then, uh, you'll have submission of your final assignment. As I said, that's going to differ depending on what module you're undertaking. In terms of entry requirements and fees, we uh, accept an honours degree at two, two or above, plus two years relevant work experience. Uh, comparable alternative qualifications or professional qualifications and relevant work experience may also be considered. And basically what you do there is uh, write up a personal statement in consultation with uh, your staff or global personal consultant and they'll send it to me uh, and then I can make that decision depending on your work experience. So although usually we have, uh, we require an honours degree of two, two or above plus that two years relevant work experience, if you don't have those qualifications and certainly get in touch with your staff or global personal consultant and that we can enter into a conversation about that. Uh, selection of suitable candidates is at discretion of the head of MBA program, so, so my manager. Uh, alternative to MBA for those without relevant work experience, uh, you can do an MSc in business management that starts in September and January. So uh, if you don't have that relevant work experience, if you just finished university, for example, your, your primary degree, then you can do the MSc in business management. If your first language is in English, you'll need to provide evidence demonstrating that you can con conduct yourself in English. For example, if you've done a previous degree in English, well, that kind of proves that you, you have proficiency in English or the results of an English language test. And for more information on those, you can contact your staff or global personal consultant. So the application deadline for this intake has been extended a little bit. So we've been extended to the 28th of May. And in terms of fees, then we'll just get you, I'll pass you over to the global uh, staff or global personal consultant once again. So that's me and that's uh, that's the MBA uh, Global Online. I do hope you'll be able to join us. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, myself and Helen will take those now. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kiran. Okay, so I can see that there are quite a few questions that have been posted already. Um, so please uh, feel free to, to type out whatever you'd like to ask us. Okay, so the first question from Faud. Um, once I have completed my very last module of the program, how long after that do I get my final degree? Mm -hmm. So this will depend on the on what, which trimester that you actually finish. Uh, usually uh, the graduation ceremony takes place, I believe, two to three months after the end of the programs. Um, and after the graduation ceremony, whether or not you can actually attend it in person, or whether you're graduating in what's called in absentia, after that you will be able to um, to get your degree certificate. So your degree certificate, you can obviously pick it up during your graduation. But if you if you can't make it over to to the Usher Hall here in Edinburgh, uh, then you can it'll be posted out to you. Um, so I'd say we again depending on on when you finish the program between two to three months after that. Good, and Leanne's question is, can I actually start with one module and then decide to take two modules? Um, and also the other way around, what happens if I now take two modules, can I then swap and do one module? What is your opinion? Well, we have two modules in mind and we feel that that's uh, a, you know, a, a good amount of work to be carrying on with throughout your weeks. Um, but we'd certainly be able to we'll be open to that conversation if you wanted to take one module, for example, through the trimester, you would just purchase that one particular module. I, I can't see any uh, issue with that. Um, it would obviously just extend the length of the program onto another trimester because you'd have, a, have to do um, another one. We also wouldn't recommend that you, you take more than two, two modules per trimester. Um, if you're working as well, because that would be quite a significant workload. So, um, you know, that would extend you, your time. But I can't see any problem with you taking one module per trimester. Okay, and Tabocco's question is, um, is the finance module quite difficult? Um, I have not taken finance at all throughout my studies, um, and I hope that this will not be difficult. Well, I'd say that depends on yourself. If I was to take the finance module, I would find it quite difficult, but that's because I do not have a, a financial brain. I do not have a numerical brain whatsoever. I, I have a more uh, literary based uh, brain. Um, so I think it would depend on you, on yourself and your own abilities. If you have an interest in that, I think that means that you probably have some proficiency for that. Um, however, we, you know, we, we do, uh, we do know that you, you do you don't require it we don't require any financial um, qualifications for you to take this uh to take this this route or this specialism um you know there would be maybe some relevant work experience required uh but if you have some exposure to that then we would be taking it from a very um introductory level and then wrapping it it up in terms of of difficulty quite quickly um but as i said it's all self-directed uh, and you're able to engage with that quite you know on your own terms and there is also um, our global online support team and your global online tutors are available to you should you require any um any any question if you have any questions or need any support with that so i'd say if you have an interest in finance and you have maybe some relevant work experience um then i i think you will be fine um uh, but again only you would be able to know to, to know best but if you do have any maybe any questions about that you can certainly email me or you can actually look at the module descriptor on the, the Edinburgh Napier website that will give you some some um, detail on what the main topics and the main learning objectives are for that module so certainly you can look at that and then make that decision whether you want to, to go down the MBA finance route. Good. Um, and uh, a question from Ali. Um, I would like to have guest access to your learning online platform. Is this permitted? I haven't heard of that happening before. Usually, because the because the uh, uh, the learning materials are only available in Moodle, and because they are they are copyrighted to Edinburgh Napier, um, I don't think we would be able to give you guest access. However, if you wanted to maybe get a flavor of the type of materials, I could cert you could certainly email me and ask me for maybe access to uh, 
um, to a particular um, set of readings or something like that 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 would be used. So I can give you maybe a, a small snippet of a module, um, but I don't think I'd be able to give you guest access, and I don't actually think that would work on the on the actual system as well, unfortunately. But okay, if you give me, yeah. Okay. Yes, continue. Absolutely, you you quite uh, correct there, Dr. Kiran. Um, it is uh, it is quite difficult, um, especially with uh, you know the various UK laws um, that we need to obviously follow. So um, quite so. Um, all right, and a question again from uh, Sarah: uh, Are tutors available to provide one-on-one -on -one extra support to students, if so required? And how can I contact the tutors? Mm -hmm. So yes, they should be available, available for one-on-one -on -one support if needed. Um, we also have um, some drop-in sessions where it wouldn't necessarily be one-on-one, -on -one, but you certainly would have the question, or you'd have the chance to ask the question of, of the tutor directly. Um, so we have those sessions uh, every week. Um, so there will be a kind of um, th there will be a lot of opportunities for you to engage with that global online tutor, um, and, and certainly you can email them at any time as well. Okay, and Hamad's question is, um, I am hearing impaired and I'm very, very interested in doing this MBA program. Um, would you be able to assist uh, students like myself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, as I said, my own research interest is in diversity and inclusion, and I'm also the inclusion lead for the School of Business. So that is one thing that I, I have been looking at is about uh, looking at the inclusion of people, for example, with hearing impairments and stuff like that, um, and how we include them within that learning experience. And Napier, more broadly, has a, a very good reputation for inclusion um, of everyone, especially those with, with, uh, with uh, disabilities. So certainly we would be able to provide some support with that we do have an office, an inclusion office, um, who, who deals with uh, or who liaises with our lecturers and our tutors as well to, to provide our students with um, an inclusive learning experience. So certainly that would be no issue for us. And what are the different resources provided uh, to me in order to prepare for my assignments? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So, as I said, in week one of, of the trimester, you would have access to your learning materials, but for the very first of your trimesters, you would have an induction. So, the induction would tell you how to access, for example, the library, access some of the online workshops that they provide there, uh, and things like that, that would, and some academic writing skills workshops as well, that would help you with, with writing those assignments. As I said, we have um, weekly uh, drop-in sessions. Um, uh, uh, with the, the global online tutors and they'll be able to provide uh, uh, you know, answer any of your questions that you might have about the assignments. So you can ask very specific questions from the tutors. But then obviously we know that people, there, there's a lot of common issues that come up with people, especially those who maybe have, haven't um, haven't been in education for a while. There's some common issues with, with regards to, to writing or, or formatting, things like that. Um, there will be resources available. So you'll have those uh, generic resources available to you, to you per, for the module. You'll have the resources avail available to you from the library, as well as those specific um, opportunities to request uh, assistance from your global online tutor as well. So hopefully we have everything covered with that before you actually do your assignment. Okay, and uh, Mohammed's question is, I have seen other MBAs that are very traditional and have examinations. Um, does this MBA have examinations? And if not, why not? Okay, so that's a great question. Um, so we don't have any examinations. There's actually a growing kind of trend and a growing uh, amount of research in pedagogy. Um, so the, the, the study of learning and teaching um, that shows that those end of module or end of year examinations don't really help with with learning as much as we thought they might in the past um, really the learning comes from those discussions those um those uh kind of uh, ideas that we're coming up with in our head um or these reflections that we have whilst we're doing assignments so a lot of that learning actually takes place when we're writing for example an essay so we're writing an essay uh, and we have to go and read some some research so we're going to read research we're engaging with that research and we're finding other research that helps us with with our essay and, and with that construction of an essay or a construction of an assignment report or whatever it is we're actually become experts in that material a lot better than just learning or cramming some material 
for an exam the night before because what happens i i know when my undergrad um my undergrad was in biomedical science i do not re remember anything about bi biomedical science because i had traditional examinations where i just learned things off i learned an essay off i went to the exam hall and i just put it down in the paper so i don't really remember much about that so there's a growing kind of trend within pedagogy um and within uh, student learning that we're moving away from those examinations and we're trying to provide a more holistic learning experience so those reports those financial analyses for example or those consultancy reports are a lot more valuable in terms of learning and in terms of um, learning that material and remembering that material after the MBA uh, has finished so that's the reason why we don't have any examinations excellent good and uh, a question from Hamad uh, does the university offer any career guidance or counseling to explore different employment opportunities Mm -hmm. So there is a career guidance uh, office um, that will help you and you are available to use that as well. So they offer um, some workshops as well as, I believe, um, some one-to-one -one, um, appointments as well, if you have any questions. Okay, and uh, I do understand that this MBA is in the process of getting the ACSB accreditation. Um, can you please let us know what is the latest status of this? Mm -hmm. Yes, so we had um, an update from our head of school not so long ago, I believe two weeks ago, um, and he said that the, the application has gone um, to the AACSB uh, general offices. Um, it has been uh, provisionally approved, meaning that you know they, they are happy with the application. They're going to come out in, I believe, it's 2022 to give their to, uh, the people from the office in America. Um, they will come out and they will do an inspection of the campus, and they'll have some interviews and they'll have some discussions with our with our academics here. Um, I believe that's in uh, October 2022 is the the date that has been set. Um, and after that, then hopefully we will get the good news about accreditation. But so we are well advanced in the process, but we haven't actually got, gotten through the process just yet. Good, almost there, almost there. Okay, and um, a very popular question that has been coming up, and I can see there's about three or four um, uh, applicants who have actually said the same thing. Um, does this degree state online distance learning? That's that's the first part of the question. And can I actually get a job anywhere in the world with this particular um, MBA? Mm -hmm. Well, for, for the first question, no, it doesn't say online learning on it. Um, it just it will just say your MBA and your route, um, uh, as with any any degree certificate. Um, in terms of your second question, I mean, I think an MBA is a kind of globally recognised qualification. Certainly, there is a, a level of esteem and a, a level of prestige that comes from having an MBA. So, I think it would certainly um, it would certainly help your chances. Um, and I think because it's a globally recognised qualification and it's, it sits at that globally recognised level, then certainly it would it would help you with your career opportunities. Again, depending on your own particular circumstances, yeah. Okay, and uh, what is the pass rate for this MBA? Uh, do you perhaps have any statistics? So I don't have the statistics to hand, but I know, I think it is around the 80% mark. So I believe, or in the 80s, I should say. So I think, I have a feeling it's 86%, uh, but I might just be just be making that up. I, I don't know why I remember that. Um, but I've had a conversation um, a couple of months ago, and I believe it is sitting around um, within the 80s, um, and maybe the mid 80s um, is our pass rate. Um, certainly we want to ensure that everyone passes their modules and 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 the, the, the degree overall. So that's why we have all that support in place in those um, sessions, uh, live academic sessions with the global online tutors. Um, and I think if you engage with that and you engage with the process, really ask questions when you need to ask questions um, and use all the supports that, that, that are available to you, then you should have no problem. Ken, Abu Bakr's question is, is this particular online program um, identical to the one offered uh, on the campus? And if so, is there any opportunity that I could do one or two of the modules on the campus? 
So the module, the, the programs are equivalent, but they're not identical. So they offer, obviously offer the equivalent degree, um, and with that, with that regard, the global online MBA is equivalent to the in-person MBA or on-campus MBA. However, there are different structures involved, so they're actually not compatible. So you wouldn't be able to do one online and then one um, on, on campus, unfortunately. Okay, and another question from Mohammed is regarding the English requirement. Um, do I need to submit an IELTS uh, exam of 6.5 in order to meet this English requirement? So I think I would turn to you for that, Helen. I think um, an IELTS um, would be the, the most commonly used um, English proficiency. Um, uh, result that we would use, but I know there are some others available. Um, but yes, uh, that we would expect some standard of English proficiency um, as evidenced by, um, for example, an IELTS uh, result or a, um, a previous degree in English. Yeah, absolutely. Do uh, get in touch uh, with me or your personal academic consultant and we'll be able to advise you of the various methods um, of reaching that very important uh, English requirement for the university. So please do get in touch with that. Um, and I can see that there is also a question from Luso, um, which I can actually um, answer. It's regarding any kind of scholarships or discounts um, that we have uh, for this program. Again, please do get in touch with your academic consultant and we'll be able to advise you of a very, very flexible uh, payment plan and if uh, you do qualify for any of our scholarships and discounts. Okay, if I do fill in an assignment, um, do I get critical review from the tutor and therefore I can then um, submit another assignment? Yeah, absolutely. So no matter what grade that you get, whether you fail it, whether you pass it, or whether you do really, really excellently on it, you will get some constructive feedback from, from the person who's grading it, um, the Global Online Tutor or the lecturer who's grading it. Um, so you will have constructive feedback. You'll say, well, this is where, where you did, you know, you did quite well. This is where um, you might need to improve upon. Here's what you could do. For example, if you have failed the assignment, here's what you can do to, to get that mark um, to, to a pass. So definitely we would be giving you a lot of formative feedback on that assignment and you would then have the opportunity to, to resubmit it. Okay, and uh, Suman's question again is about IELTS. Um, I'll answer that. Um, Suman, has, uh, I can see that you have an IELTS uh, general um, and the university does accept an, an IELTS academic. However, as mentioned, please do get in touch with me or your academic consultant and we will be able to advise you of other methods um, that you can use to meet uh, that English requirement. Okay, if I cannot submit my assignment in due time, uh, do I have the flexibility to submit it at an agreed uh, date between me and my personal tutor? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we definitely recognize that there's some circumstances that just arise, especially this year of all years. Some circumstances arises that you can't meet the deadline and something unexpectedly has happened. Um, so certainly we will have flexibility in terms of, of uh, submission extensions. Um, we usually would give a, a, an extension up to uh, 10 working days from the deadline. So that works out about um, a fortnight or two weeks after the, the original deadline. That can be arranged with, with the module leader um, very easily. If there is a more kind of a pressing circumstances, for example, if there has been, for example, a bereavement or um, uh, some circumstances surrounding a bereavement or an illness, for example, something like that, then is, that is obviously very serious. So we would, um, we would allow both a, either an extension or a larger extension or a deferral of assessment. So you could actually defer your assessment to later on in the next trimester um, um, under those extenuating circumstances. But certainly, you know, if there is any, if there are any issues with that, if there's um, an idea that maybe you might not be able to get it in on time, we'd certainly just um, ask you to engage with the, the module staff as soon as possible, or the global online support team. Um, their email is there on on the screen, and they will be able to to liaise with the academics involved to give you that extension. But definitely, we know whether it's on the global online um, uh, program or on the on-campus programs, we know that things happen. So uh, we are quite flexible with that regard. 
Okay, and uh, there's another question from Hamad. Um, I have noticed that there are quite a lot of specialisations, um, and I'm quite intrigued with two of them. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any possibility that I can be issued with a dual degree? So, unfortunately, not because you have that that, that specialism, and because it, you know it is a specialism, and we expect you to, to specialize within a certain topic, you wouldn't be able to get a dual specialism. Um, however, as I said, if there is some, you know, if you're going back and forth between, say, banking and finance, for example, you can, you know, start those core modules there. Before you get to the blue modules, then you can decide maybe I want to do banking or maybe I want to do finance. Um, you know, there could be there could be a uh, you know, you can have that conversation with yourself, maybe with your tutors as well, to see what are you most interested in. But fortunately, you can't have a dual specialism. Okay. Um, and Suman, uh, your question regarding, um, you know, getting into Canada with this particular program. Um, yes, it is uh, one of the programs that is approved by WES. Um, and uh, a lot of our students at the moment actually do come from Canada. Um, so it is a program that is widely accepted, uh, whether it is Canada or the rest of the world. But uh, yes, do get in touch uh, with us um, at Stafford and we'll be able to give you a bit more detail about that as well. Okay, and um, a final question, oh good, oh, from Abu Bakr. Um, I have completed a postgraduate certificate from another UK university. Will you be able to provide me with some credit exemptions in order to lessen the time frame for this MBA? So absolutely, we can definitely engage in that conversation about exemptions, um, credit exemptions. Uh, we have certainly done it before, uh, you know, for even this trimester, I have had that conversation with students. We would just ask you to provide um, um, a, a statement to that effect to your, your Stafford Global consultants um, who can then, and then obviously the CV um, and um, some of your learning outcomes. So it's really important that you give us the learning outcomes from your previous modules so that we can see how well those map on or compare to the, the, the modules that we have here. So, for example, if you've done, um, you know, your, your uh, certificate in leadership, for example, or leadership and strategy, we could look at that and say, well, that sounds very much like our leading strategic decision making module. Therefore, we can give give you an exemption for that. So, but we really have to see those learning outcomes before we can make that discussion. But certainly, it is a possibility. Okay, um, and my employer wishes to fund my studies and they would like to know if this is a, considered a full-time or part-time degree. That is very important um, as the scholarship that they provide is based on this information. Mm -hmm. So I, I would consider this a part-time degree because it's it's two modules. Um, and certainly we we have designed it in mind with uh, the person in mind who is who has caring responsibilities or has a full-time career as well so I consider this a part-time okay good and um, very important um, about fees we have quite a few questions regarding fees I just want to mention one very important thing is fees is not determined by nationality okay so fees are determined by uh, the various regions where applicants are currently working and residing please do get in touch with your academic consultant and we'll be able to advise you and give you more guidance on that Okay, and I think I've managed to actually uh, get all the questions together. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Your questions uh, were very good this evening. Um, and Dr. Kiran, again, thank you for being with us uh, and taking the time to discuss the MBA program. Um, as Dr. Kiran has said, um, we have a slight extension uh, to our um, application deadline, and that is due to the unprecedented amount of applications that the university has uh, received. Uh, so we have have got until the 28th of May. Please do try and send your application as soon as possible. Um, if you wish to apply for the September 2021 intake, we also are open for that as well. Okay, so please do get in touch with your academic consultant and uh, let's get these documents in and get that very important unconditional offer for you. Thanks again very much, Dr. Kiran, and a good evening to you and a good evening to everyone else. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.